Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors today. We are delighted to have here with us yet again Dr. Eric Bojas. Dr. Eric Bojas is a leading cardiologist he is going to be speaking on palliative care and caregiving for seniors. As you know it's world hospice and palliative care day today which is also good name. <coughs> Sorry Dave I have to repeat it. <coughs> And why it didn't happen in the earlier page. Okay, starting now. Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today. We are delighted to have here with us Dr. Eric Bojas. Dr. Bojas is a leading cardiologist and he's going to be speaking with us today on palliative care and caregiving for seniors. As we know, it is World Hospice and Palliative Care Day today, which is October 9th. Dr. Bojas is a professor in cardiology and a senior cardiologist at the Bombay Hospital in Mumbai. He's also honorary chairman of the King George V Memorial Trust and alumnus of the TN Medical College. Dr. Borges is a recipient of 13 prizes and gold medals in his career. He's also associated as a cardiologist in Mauritius and Tanzania at hospitals which have a collaboration with the Bombay Hospital. He has performed over 30,000 angiograms, including coronary and pediatric cases and performed over 7,000 cases of coronary, of coronary angioplasty with and without stent implantations. The King George V Memorial Trust, which we have uh, heard about the last time Dr. Borges was there, is, has also set up the Sukun Nilaya Center, which is uh, a leading center for palliative care. And Dr. Borges is going to speak about this and palliative care in general. Thank you once again, Dr. Borges, for being here. How are you, doctor? Uh, very well. Thank you, Badiuman. I'm delighted to be here today. And um, um, among, among what I consider my old friends. Yeah. Should I be greeting you on, uh, on World Hospice and Palliative Care Day? How's the, what, what does it really mean? What does the day mean for, uh, for everyone? Well, you know, uh, it, it has been a tradition for many years to for the uh, WHO and such organizations to have a World uh, Heart Day, a World Health Day, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, the whole idea of doing this is to focus attention on a particular subject. For example, on a World Heart Day, the focus is on heart health. On World Hospice and Palliative Care Day, the focus is on uh, hospice and palliative care. And uh, during my talk to you today, I am going to try and explain to your audience what is the difference between hospice and palliative care and what is palliative care all about. So Great. as we go along, we'll talk about it. Great. So over to you. Uh... Dr. Borges, and we'll take in questions. Those of you who have questions, please put them in the Q&A tab, as always. And if you can mention your, mention your gender and your age, it will be uh, good. So over to you, uh, doctor. Thank you, Pradyuman. And once again, thank you for inviting me to be here. But before my, I start my you know, presentation, I would like to thank God Almighty for his abundant blessings uh, for to all of us, and, uh, and in particular for Sukun Nilay, which he has really blessed. And of course, I couldn't have achieved anything. We couldn't have achieved anything without the board members of the King George V Memorial Trust, who have been so supportive of every endeavor that we have uh, taken on. And of course, the staff of Sukun Nilay have been wonderful. Very few people understand that this center was conceived, crafted and started during the pandemic. And this is something like a record. We got it up and running in less than a year, which is quite remarkable given all the constraints that we had. And all this, of course, was because of the cooperation and support of several lovely people. We are grateful to the CIPLA Foundation because uh, uh, CIPLA is one of the companies that I respect because of their commitment to social causes and they have, are supporting our endeavor 
with a very generous uh, grant which takes care of most of our operating expenses. We have had hundreds of donors who have given large amounts and small amounts of money and to them we are extremely grateful and we are very grateful to the doctors and families who entrust to us with utmost confidence their loved ones and their patients for us to take care of. So having given you this little small uh, thank you speech, because I think it is so important for me to thank everyone who has played a stellar role in the crafting uh, and the launching of Sukun Nilay. Now, what is palliative care? The history of palliative care goes back 2,500 years. And it was actually launched, the concept was launched by uh, Hippocrates. And all of you know that the doctors take a Hippocratic oath, which was again, uh, the genius of the man. And, uh, you know, in this one simple sentence, cure sometimes, treat often, comfort always. With this one sentence, he defined in the last two words, comfort always, and that is the essence of palliative care, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, it took centuries, decades before palliative care was conceptualized in a modern way, and it was introduced into the UK in the 1950s. But it was introduced basically to take care of cancer patients who had reached the end of the road as far as treatment was concerned. So when the doctor told them, look, we have no more treatment for you, no radiation, no chemotherapy, no surgery can help you. At that time, the patients were in a very poor shape. Many of them were in lots of pain and misery and discomfort. And it was quite tragic to see them suffer. To help those kind of patients, palliative care was introduced. And it took the form of what we call hospice care today. And basically, it was end of life care. Hospice care is synonymous with end of life care. Palliative care is not end of life care. And I will draw that distinction as we go along with my talk. Now, you can imagine it took 2000 odd years before things started evolving. But it was only for cancer patients that it was started. And the rest of the patients were left behind. And today, one of the themes of the World Hospice and Palliative Care is let no one be left behind. And that is so critical because millions of people do not and cannot get palliative care. So we have to do whatever we can to improve the situation. Now look at the situation today. You will be amazed to know that in the city of Mumbai, palliative care for cancer patients is very easily available. And there's nothing amazing about that. It's been going along for a long time. But Sukur Nilaya is the only and the first center, there still is no other center, to offer palliative care in patients who do not suffer from cancer. So if you don't have cancer, but you need palliative care, Sukur Nilaya is there for you. It was crafted with that intention. Now, green shoots have begun to spring up all over the country. And there are some centers coming up for pediatric palliative care for children who need palliative care. But the vast majority of the poor, the disabled, prisoners, LGBTQ, mentally challenged, they're all left behind. The caregivers are left behind. There are very few organizations which provide care to the caregiver. And all of them should come under some kind of an umbrella which helps them look after their patients, which helps their patients to get palliative care. And that is the whole idea of 
this year's World Hospice and Palliative Care Day. It's not only leave no one behind, it is also equity in care. Right now, there's a huge divide. The north of the planet is very well equipped with palliative care. The south of the planet is a bit of a disaster as far as palliative care is concerned. And India is no exception. So now how can we improve the situation? Well, one of the best ways of improving the situation is to spread awareness. Most people I talk to, including, mind you, medical people, think that palliative care is synonymous with cancer. It's not. It's not synonymous with end of life care. And I'll show you how and why. Okay. So it is very necessary. Awareness, even the government, the medical profession, social, the civil society, none of them are really fully aware of palliative care. So we need to make them aware. And after making them aware, we need to have education imparted. And you'll be shocked to know that medical colleges don't teach palliative care. So, medical education for palliative care. Paramedical staff needs to be educated palliative care. There isn't any such education available. It's only now that we are beginning to make a little inroads and we are beginning to hold seminars and classes, etc., to uh, educate people about palliative care. And of course, from society and from the government, we need empathy and we need support. We need support from the government. We need support from corporate India, corporate the world to help with palliative care. Very, very important. And before we go any further, what exactly is palliative care? You know, different people have different ideas about palliative care. There was so much confusion about how one would define palliative care and all that was kind of set to rest by the WHO when in 2003, I believe, they defined it and now this is the standard definition of palliative care. And the important thing is that it's been very carefully worded. It is an approach. Palliative care is not a science, it's an approach. Okay, it's a combination it's a judicious use of science and art that improves the quality of life of patients and their families. So it's not only patients, they're also dealing with families. And these families and patients are facing problems associated with life threatening illnesses. Okay. If they are brief illnesses, life threatening, let's say you have a burst and ulcer in your tummy. Uh, you'll, be, so you'll be operated surgically and you'll be fine in 5, 10, 15 days. You don't need palliative care. But if you have a major intestinal problem, which is chronic, may end up being life-threatening, you need palliative care. Okay? And you provide this care by preventing and relieving suffering of these patients and families by means of early identification, early identification, and impeccable assessment and treatment of pain and other problems. It's not only pain. Pain is very often the dominant symptom of a disease. But there are so many other symptoms, okay, which are very troublesome. Cough, for example, can be very troublesome. You know, severe, a severe nausea can be very troublesome. A diarrhea can be very troublesome. So there are so many symptoms, okay. And you treat these symptoms physically and psychologically, socially and spiritually. It is an all-encompassing definition of palliative care. So please note that it's a widespread, multifactorial, multidisciplinary approach. And the goals of palliative care, what, what are our goals when we take up palliative care? So of course, is to provide relief. And remember that you have to say that 
life is worth living and we will try to make it worth living and you always treat life and death as normal processes you don't you don't treat a patient and make him afraid of dying death is a normal process and it should be treated matter of factly and the more honest you are with your patient the better it goes down with them the treatment is not there to either hasten or postpone death you don't want to prolong death but you want to prolong meaningful life okay and you need to integrate psychological spiritual aspects of patient care which is so important and offer the support system for both the patient and the family so that they can have a lot of comfort and dignity through the trajectory of their illness and these are some very important components of palliative care you can see the pyramid the central pyramid and the central pyramid is made up of the two edges hope and honesty there's no point in giving people false hope true hope if it is there you should discuss it and you have to be honest with your patient these are the building blocks of palliative care very often you'll see patients uh, relations telling you then please don't tell my mother my father my brother that he's got cancer or that he's got a very serious heart problem because he won't be able to take it no that is the wrong message every patient every person has the right to know and it should be broken to him or her in a very gentle fashion by people who are qualified to handle these situations and believe you me 99 out of 100 people who are seriously sick appreciate honesty they have to learn to deal with the reality rather than hide from the reality so it's very very important to have honesty there you need to give them symptom relief from whatever symptoms they have with medication and other devices or whatever is required okay and the most important thing is that you want to add life important life to their days to the total number of days you don't want him to be like a dying duck you need to improve the quality of his life psychological support very important spiritual support very important and all that is available through a to team work which we will discuss about a little later i want all of you to also understand the concept of total pain see pain is a very you know common word and a very well recognized entity but we always think of pain as physical pain i'm getting pain in my tummy i'm getting pain in my chest physical absolutely no question it's a sign of underlying disease a sign of underlying problem but do not forget that there is something called psychological pain okay where you feel you feel helpless you feel angry okay because of a disease process or whatever then there is spiritual pain where oh, why did god choose to give me this illness what wrong have i done why am i being punished by god almighty if the person happens to believe in god almighty and then there is social pain i've lost my job because of my illness i'm in financial distress who's going to support my family what kind of support can i give them so that is social pain and that is the entire concept of total pain and all this needs to be addressed by palliative care physicians and the team that is responsible for palliative care now obviously the most important thing is symptom control because that's the thing that uh, you get you get almost instant gratification from the patient i'm getting pain relieve my pain i'm having diarrhea relieve my diarrhea right 
So good symptom control is the hallmark. And there is, uh, there are various methods that you can use for good symptom control, but you first have to evaluate the symptom. You have to explain the symptom to the satisfaction of the patient. Why am I getting pain? You're getting pain because of this. You're getting diarrhea because of this. And this is how we are going to manage your symptom. This is how we are going to monitor your symptom and make certain that you get relief. And the most important thing, and the thing that most of us do not do, is to listen to our patient patiently and carefully. And the reason why doctors do not do that, I will come to you in uh, come uh, discuss it in a little bit. Okay. So good symptom control, very important with honesty and integrity. Great psychological support is so very important. You must be a good listener and listen to the patient. They have their fears, their anxieties, their worries. Now, obviously, if you're a medical person, uh, you're a doctor, there's very little you can do, but you can pass on that information to your team. And tell the counselors, tell the psychiatrists, tell the social workers, these are the anxieties of the patient. He's worried about his daughter's marriage. He wants to be there to, you know, to see her in the temple getting married or see her in the church. You know, he's afraid that he won't be able to do that. So all these things have to be addressed honestly and absolutely patiently. Okay. And once the team understands it, then they can work on making the patient feel psychologically better about it. We have to try to make the patient as independent as possible. There are a lot of groups which offer psychosocial help, okay, where they come over and talk to the patients and help them psychologically. There are prayer groups and there are groups that are, uh, who discuss various, their various problems. You have groups for breast cancer. You have groups for peptic ulcers. You have groups for all kinds of things. So these patients should be introduced to those groups. Then you have social support, you know, financial aid. You, there are a lot of, uh, you know, community help available in, in our country. Communities are a big thing, you know. And we should tap into the resources of the community to make various kinds of uh, social help available for these patients. And that is what the medical social workers who are an integral part of the palliative care team do. They are the ones who reach out to the community and offer them, offer these patients uh, help from the local community. Okay. And the spiritual needs. So sometimes they need uh, you know, a priest or a maulana or whatever faith they belong to, you know, religious people, uh, you know, who come there to comfort them and give them advice and solace. I think it goes a long way, long way in helping these people heal because healing is not only body. You have to heal the mind as well. So it's very, very, very important. Okay. Now, here we come to a very important thing. How do you weigh well, what is palliative care and what is hospice care? Let me put it in one simple sentence. Palliative care is the umbrella. Hospice care is one small segment of palliative care. If you look at the, uh, the, the table you know, up there on the slide, you will see that the first three lines are the same. It's absolutely the same. Okay, no change at all. You want to give physical and psychological relief. You want to focus on the quality of life. It's a multidisciplinary team approach. Everything is the same. However, palliative care as a whole can be offered during any stage of the disease. So the disease is early. You can offer it in the, in the middle, middle of the trajectory. You can offer it at the end of the trajectory. You can offer it. Okay. So it doesn't matter which stage. However, when you're dealing with hospice care, it is end of life care. There's no curative treatment available at that point in time because uh, med medicine cannot help these patients. They are going to pass away, unfortunately, 
and generally the consensus of opinion is that a patient who is referred to for hospice treatment doesn't get any active treatment and he is unlikely to live more than six months. So there's a huge difference between hospice care and general palliative care. And I want everybody to understand this distinction. Okay. Now, since I'm a cardiologist, I thought I would just spend a little while talking about cardiac palliative care in the Indian context. See, there's a heart disease is rampant in India. We don't even have exact figures about the incidence of heart disease. But a paper written about a few years ago tells us that there are 36 million people with heart failure. Heart failure, failing heart, not heart disease. Maybe out of every eight patients, one person will go into heart failure. So if you multiply that by eight times, it will give you an idea of how, ma how much heart disease we have in India. 200, 300 million cases of heart disease. Okay. And they, of course, will be, uh, you, you have heard of rheumatic heart disease, which involves the heart, hypertension and heart disease, diabetes and heart disease, ischemic heart disease of coronary artery disease, as we call it, cardiomyopathy, disease of the muscle, inflammation of the heart. And we're seeing more and more of it now, right now with, with the coronavirus and congenital heart disease, which mean birth defects, heart disease that is produced because of, of structural defects of the heart present since birth. So all of these, okay, can give rise to heart failure. Okay. And I'm using heart failure as a prototype. All right. Now, every well-trained cardiologist can be a palliative care specialist. Okay. He can because he knows he can treat the disease. But that's not what palliative care is all about. He doesn't have the time to treat the patient. He has time to treat the disease only. There are too many other patients waiting for him to have their disease treated. So he will treat, he will treat Dinesh with heart failure. Okay. He's not treating Dinesh. He's treating the heart failure in Dinesh. I hope you understand the difference because he doesn't have the time to go into the nitty gritty of the social, uh, social status, the financial status and all the rest of it. Okay. And that is a very integral part of the treatment. Therefore, Palliative care today is a partnership. And the partnership is between the patient and caregiver as one side. And they partner with the cardiologist, the primary care physician, the physiotherapist, the nutritionist, and the counselor. So you have a unit, the patient and the, and the caregiver, who partner with the other members of the palliative care team and each and every member of this palliative care team is of vital importance and consequence okay now why is this partnership so important okay as a doctor i know what is the best treatment available for the disease not for the patient i hope i'm making a very clear distinction about that okay so yeah fine you know you've got heart failure Heart transplant is the best solution for you. But yes, it's the best solution, but I can't afford a heart transplant. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the financial resources. I don't have the social resources because heart transplant, for example, uh, I have to be, have taken immunosuppressive treatment for the rest of my life. I can't afford that. I can't afford to live in a place where infections are going to be very low. I, have, I can't live in isolation for a few months before I'm allowed to go out and mix with the general and so on and so forth. There are social, psychological, financial issues which the palliative care team will understand and therefore guide the patient for the best available treatment. Okay. The question has to be asked, which patient needs palliative care? 
Everybody with heart disease, do they need palliative care, for example? And the short answer is yes. Each and every one of them needs palliative care, provided it is not a short illness. For example, okay, let's say a child gets diphtheria. All of you have heard of a disease called diphtheria. As part of that diphtheria, he may get a problem with the heart. How long does diphtheria last? Week, 10 days. And then it goes away. Once it goes away, the heart heals. It comes back to normal. Does that person need palliative care for his heart? No. Because it's a very short-lived illness. So each and every person who has a severe illness, which may lead to death, needs palliative care. If he has a severe or a not so severe illness, but goes on for a long time and causes a great amount of distress to the patient, needs palliative care. So every person who does not get cured in a very short time of an illness is a candidate for palliative care. All right. And you should obtain this palliative care consult as early as possible in the trajectory of the illness once a diagnosis of a major cardiovascular illness has been established. And I want to make it very clear that once you enter palliative care, do you discontinue medical treatment? No. Medical treatment is the linchpin, the center around which palliative care revolves. So your physician, your surgeon, whoever is treating you, your gastroenterologist, your cardiologist, your pulmonologist, whoever it is, will be in charge of your medical treatment. He will share that information of what he plans to do, of course, with the patient's family and with the palliative care physician, as well as the other members of the team. And then they will sit down and have a conference with the patient and the family, explain the various steps that are to be taken. And it has to match with the patient's desires to seek a particular form of treatment. Most times, the treatment that is suggested is rammed down the patient's throat. You have to do a bypass surgery. No, I don't have to do a bypass surgery. It may be the best thing for me, which is fine, but I have my own reservations and my own desires, my own compulsions, my own the thoughts. I have to think of so many other things before I make a decision. Just because XYZ is the best surgeon in the world and he says you have a bypass surgery or ABC is the best cardiologist and says you have to have an angioplasty, doesn't mean I need to do that. I hope I'm com communicating with all of you, right? Now, therefore, you need what I call a heart team approach. Cardiologist, the cardiac surgeon, the intensivist, if the intensivist is necessary for acute illness in a patient who has got a heart issue, and the palliative care specialist to ensure that the treatment plan suggested by the cardiologist, the surgeon, whoever it is, conforms with the wishes of the patient and the family and is physically, emotionally, financially, socially acceptable to the patient. Okay? So that is something which is so very important. And as you can see from this uh, slide here, you know, palliative care in the center and you have the four four globes which are coming in. One is caregiver support, which very few people talk about. Remember that caregivers who are dealing with a person who is sick day in and day out, they themselves get sick. They are tired. They want, they want respite or respite, however you want to pronounce it. Okay. They need to be given time away. They themselves are mentally, physically and financially sometimes exhausted. Okay, so caregiver support, very important. And God forbid, if the loved one passes away, then they need bereavement support, 
which which is something that nobody really you know uh, offers these days in a planned way okay you need spiritual support you need advanced care planning now what do i mean by advanced care planning i gave you an example of a heart transplant okay as an extreme part of the spectrum there are other intermediate stages you have left ventricular assist devices you have artificial hearts you have pacemakers which will help you to survive longer you have various other kinds of uh, devices which help pumps and so on and so forth do i need to go down that road i may need it for my disease but do i need it as a patient that is where palliative care comes in and helps you to take an educated decision okay now the key to successful palliative care is honesty and you have to give an honest opinion to all your share or all the stakeholders okay need to be you have to be brutally honest with all of them give them all the information that they need because hiding information is poison you poison the mind you poison the psyche of a person by hiding information you are doing it in good faith because the patient may not be able to handle it but by doing that you are poisoning the patient so for heaven's sake be as honest as you possibly can and i would say be brutally honest okay and having said that i would like to share with you because of time constraint okay i i can't i can't take this any further because the subject is huge and vast but i want to share you what we are doing at the king george v memorial institute i call it mumbai's precious gem okay we have all these uh, uh, national organizations working in partnership with us at king george for the uh, orat for the hearing disabled national association for the blind om creations for the mentally disabled jai food foot for the orthopedically handicapped bal aasha for abandoned babies cancer patients aid association the vatsalya foundation for street children we run a 70 bedded infirmary for destitute patients and the crowning glory is the palliative care center for non cancer patients sukurnila that's what we run okay this is our center for those of you and i would encourage all of you to visit it we have all these facilities i think i discussed this with you last time so i'm not going to you know spend too much time on this uh, this is a glimpse of the center that we have it's beautifully crafted completely air conditioned and completely free the treatment given in sukur nilaya whatever the treatment is completely free the stay is free the treatment is free everything is free the medicines we try to provide as many as possible we give them free aids wheelchairs and what are walkers and whatever else they may need okay this place is going to be for seniors exclusively we are going to shortly shortly be starting a uh, day care center for seniors where you know the your loved ones can bring you here and you can spend the whole day with us in comfort in luxury whether you're rich or poor doesn't matter to us you come there spend your time you'll be looked after you'll be fed you'll be entertained and you'll be nursed if you need nursing care and you'll go home to your loved ones in the evening a wonderful staff that looks after you when you are in sukunnila the contact details of sukunnila and of course the, my favorite cartoon of them all okay all of you know about snoopy okay and living and dying in pain it doesn't have to happen okay yes you may have pain but you needn't live with pain we can do something about it okay and uh, we shall leave no one behind is is today's motto at sukunnila okay god bless all of you thank you very much for patient listening thank you Dr. Bojas, for your presentation, I'm going to just go off the screen share.
I've gone off the screen chat. You just need to stop it. Doctor. I've done that. So I've taken it. I've stopped it. There's a stop screen share. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it's off. That's right. That's. Thank you once again uh, for your presentation, uh, Doctor. Very detailed and, uh, you know, when I did, uh, when we did announce uh, uh, about your session and about the fact that this uh, palliative care, one of the persons who uh, uh, reacted with, oh gosh, palliative care, it's a very scary thing. Now, you know, this is a perception that unfortunately exists. Uh, is, is this true? What have you faced over, uh, uh, you know, in your, in your experience with people? Well, uh, let me, let me, let me uh, uh, share this with you. And I spent the first 10-15 uh, minutes of my talk explaining to you the difference between end-of-life care Palliative care in people's mind is associated with cancer and is associated with uh, end of life care where everything is pain, 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 pain and pain and distress. Family is in distress. No, it's not that way anymore. It may have started that way in the 1950s for 30, 40, 50 years, you know, even in the city of Bombay. There was no palliative care center, even for cancer, till 1985, when uh, the center in Bandra was started, okay, for palliative care for uh, patients uh, with cancer. But today, there's nothing to be afraid of. In fact, the entire patient is being treated, his psychological aspects, his physical aspect, his social aspect. It is a holistic approach to a problem that can be quite complex. Okay. So I absolutely see no merit in anybody saying that palliative care is scary. On the contrary, not getting palliative care is scary. Because tomorrow, let me give you an example. Somebody comes and tells you, you know, look, I need to take off your lung, you have a problem with the lung, we need to take it off. Uh, it has come as a bolt from the blue, right? You have 1001 questions, physical, social, psychological, who's going to answer them? The doctor will come and tell you, kuch khas taklif nahi hoga. Uh, ek, ek lung se aap ji sakte hain. That's the sum total of the involvement of the medical professional, not because he doesn't want to tell you, but he doesn't have the time to sit down and discuss all the pros and cons with you. However, if you're in the palliative care setup, you will have a palliative care physician come and talk to you, explain to you what it is leaving, like living without one lung, whether you're going to have any disability because of it, uh, what it means to you in terms of your job opportunities, how you'll be able to cope with it. Do you have to take medicines, etc., etc. There are a million questions in your mind, which nobody is nobody there to answer unless he's a palliative care specialist. Similarly, the physiotherapist, the counselor will be there to support you through this illness. Okay. So there's nothing to be afraid of. On the contrary, people should seek palliative care. Right. Yeah, absolutely, doctor. There's a question which has come in, which is, doctor, at what stage would one know that one should go for palliative care? And will the hospital and doctors advise me for it? You know, that, 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 that question that you're asking is a very good one. And I appreciate the question a lot. Uh, theoretically speaking, the doctors and the hospitals should advise any person with a chronic illness to seek palliative care. But since the awareness among the medical fraternity, the paramedical fraternity and civil society was pretty low, people were not sending people to palliative care. But now we are trying to change that entire awareness part of it 
We are trying to get the university to start courses in palliative care. We have applied for the university to allow us to give diplomas in palliative care. And eventually, hopefully, they'll give us permission to offer degrees in palliative care to medical uh, people after they graduate from medical school. So we need to build all that infrastructure. Okay. So it's a small beginning we are making in uh, Sukur Nilay, where we will take by preference non-cancer patients and what we do in Sukun Nilay, let's, let's take for example a person has a stroke okay he's lost the uh, the use of one arm, one leg and he has an impediment in speech and swallowing all of you have seen these patients, maybe unfortunately some of you have had to deal with it at a more personal level at home okay and it's very difficult for people at home to know how to deal with this situation. Okay. Such a patient, and we've had so many of them come into Sukun Nilaya. Okay. So they are explained in detail by our medical staff, by our paramedical staff about their illness. They are assured that this is not the end of the road. Physiotherapy is started okay including physiotherapy for fine movements the caregiver who is also allowed to stay with the patient 24 hours free of cost is taught how to look after the patient how to feed the patient if the patient can't swallow and has got a feeding tube he is taught how to use the feeding tube until the swallowing improves he is giving swall given swallowing therapy speech therapy physiotherapy and these patients at the end of 10 12 days are so much better off than what they were when they came okay and the family is so thankful because all of them tell us you know what was i going to do unless you know when i took him home i was told hospital said chutti le liji abhi okay i'm discharged i go home but what do i do at home i don't know how to look after this man at home I don't know how to look after this lady at home. So we train the caregiver and we also treat the patient with whatever treatment is prescribed by his doctor as well as any treatment that we think will benefit him psychologically, socially and physically. Doctor, one question which has come in is, is there a helpline number where we can... Just yes, in fact, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked, asked that question. Okay. Uh, we have just launched a national helpline. When I say we, it's not Sukun Nila. Eh? Sat Sat. The, correct. Sat Sat is the, is the helpline. I was just going to give you that number. So okay. I'm putting the number down here. Correct. It's 1-800-7... Uh, 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 sorry. 202-707. 2-0-2-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7-7
I am not sure there is any such center in Ahmedabad or any other, uh, other places. For cancer, you will find them. There are a few in every city. Okay. I am not sure whether they have any palliative care in the tier two and tier three towns. But we do have a national network of uh, palliative care where we try to, you know, recruit people who are family physicians, etc. Because many patients who come to Bombay, they come from all over for help, for treatment. They go back. And when they go back home, do they consult? There's nobody there with the kind of expertise that they see in Bombay. So when they go back, they talk to their doctors and we ask their, their doctors to contact us. And we recruit some of these people that way. Okay. So that way we are doing our best to try and spread awareness and spread the need for palliative care all over the country. Right. Doctor, we have uh, Mr. Gridhai Luthria who says, could the Lions Club of Mumbai action come there and guide patients and their kin how to reduce pain and give other treatments through complementary alternative non-invasive mudra therapy, sujok therapy, and Ayurvedic acupressure? Well, you know, we would be very happy to associate with anybody, all right, who, who has a methodology to give relief to patients. So uh, I really appreciate your question and thank you for your offer, sir. I would be very happy to uh, you know, have you or your representative come to our center, meet with our people, and let us discuss what we can offer each other, and uh, take the best from each other and, and move ahead. Absolutely. I'd be very, very appreciative and uh, hopeful that something can work out. Okay? Right. Uh, we have a question from... Uh... So Devendra Gada, who asks, do we have palliative care for mentally ill person? He perhaps means mentally disturbed persons. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, a large number of patients who need palliative care are patients with dementia. Okay. Uh, Parkinson's disease is another large segment of people who need palliative care, dementia. So by mentally disturbed, I don't exactly know what you mean, but if you mean any kind of mental illness, okay, uh, we would be happy to help, provided it is not a primary psychiatric illness, which means if a person has schizophrenia, okay, then he needs the primary treatment of a psychiatrist. And those kind of patients, they have special hospitals for them, which know how to deal with those, that particular segment of patient, okay. But if he, if he has general dementia or any uh, mental disturbance after, let us say, meningitis or encephalitis, we'll be happy to treat them. Thank you. By the way, Doc, Mr. Gridhari Luthia says, uh, when can I come? I'm myself 90 year old, but in very good health. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations, my friend. We'll be happy to see you. Uh, if you can note down my number and give me a call, uh, maybe Monday morning, and we'll set up something for you, sir. Okay, my number is 98200. I'll I'm put it on the good. chat. You can yeah. put it on the chat. Yeah. 79876. So I have put the number in the chat. Correct. Uh, Mr. Luthia, feel free to speak to Dr. Bojas. Uh, Dr. One. Uh, you know, the questions will keep coming and some of them are repeat, so I'm not putting them here. But one last word to people on palliative care, on the need for palliative care. You know, on, on the, on, for, for somebody who's heard of a chronic illness of some, you know, of, of perhaps something that is irreparable, uh, any, any word of advice to them? Well, I can tell you there is no reason for anybody to despair or to suffer unnecessarily. If you have a serious illness or a chronic illness, which is causing physical and mental debility, okay, 
you are the right candidate to seek palliative care give us a call we will be happy to talk to you uh we can do it on an opd basis we can do a teleconsultation or for you if you feel that you can't come to our center we would be happy to do either of those things and once the pandemic uh, abates and we hope it is you know on its way out then we we will be even starting home care where our doctors and social workers will visit homes and deal with people who cannot come to our centers we we'll give them home visits as well okay so any of you who have any questions okay please feel free to talk to us okay i will send i will put up the uh, the num sukunilaya numbers on uh, uh, the seniors yeah, website okay. okay and uh, pradyuman has agreed to put up those numbers we'll be happy to talk to you and i promise you that each of you will be given answers to your satisfaction okay doctor one last question which somebody has is that if there is someone who is not from mumbai uh -huh. who needs to come to your center yes is there any place where one can stay or does one have to organize one's own accommodation no 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 we we will we'll put him up in the center we'll admit him straight away he and his caregiver will be admitted to our center he doesn't have to stay anywhere else okay thank you thank you very much dr bojes for uh, not at all my pleasure and my pleasure greeting to the entire medical fraternity on on this day i'm going to take just a minute more uh, for everyone here and dr bojes for you as well uh, seniors today the website we've just taken on a a new and we have a new look and i'm going to just put it up on the on the screen here so the same content and uh, slightly different look and feel so we have a lot more display to uh, the content what we are also going to be doing very soon is uh, having some registration so it's not it's not going to be paid for content or content that requires money to be paid but it's just that uh, uh, there is uh, going to be yes that's where the health webinars are so the last uh, five or six health webinars uh, are linked over here so you can uh, you know to watch this videos and uh, i'll go up to the screen above and we we'll link to the webinar takeaways as well uh, so that's where you can access that and uh, yeah so we we we're, we're trying to do new things and uh, there is a fair bit that that is coming up on the seniors today website we are now uh, we've done 72 webinars doctor I oh lovely lovely we've done 72 webinars so the hundred mark should be uh, uh, we should be touching it sometime early next year and, wonderful uh, wonderful uh, you know with thanks to doctors like yourself and uh, various others who have always patronized us and sometimes at short notice sometimes you know in advance uh, <laughs> but 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 thank you very much dr bojes for 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 being here and thank you everyone we will be back once again with our health live at seniors today webinar series next saturday at 5 pm thank you once again thanks pradyuman have a have a wonderful weekend my friend you too thank you bye bye bye